I'm Jerry Karen with iRobot. We're here at uh, 2011 CES, and I'm uh, going to demonstrate for you the uh, Scuba 230 floor washing robot, which we're introducing here at the show. So this little guy is based on feedback that we got from our customers at Wet Floor Care who said they wanted the robot that would get uh, into those hard to reach spaces, in particular around the fixtures in the, in the bathroom. And so you see he's going to go back there now. So what we did was we got a challenge up to our engineers, hey, how can you make the product smaller if you have a, a, a smaller diameter to make it fit in these spaces? And they were able to do that. They reduced the diameter to six and a half inches. Still has the same height at the top level as the highest point on the uh, Scuba 300 series, which is the top of the Archon. And the way they accomplished to reducing the diameter was through a, a referred to as an active reservoir system. And when you first, uh, so let me kind of explain that here by you know, the robot. So in order to use the robot, you pop open the fill door, put it under your faucet, fill it up with water, close the door. Um, it has the uh, uh, same sort of uh, scrub system that you see in the uh, Scuba three, uh, 300 series where it sprays that clean solution, it scrubs it, then it picks it up with a squeegee in the back. I don't think I've closed this door for Yeah, I left it open. That's the problem. It's dripping. Um, and so as the clean solution is put down, the dirty uh, solution is picked up by the squeegee in the back, and that dirty solution goes into the same volume where the clean solution is, but they never mix like they might have with a mop that goes in a bucket, right? And that's because the active reservoir that's full of clean solution shrinks as it's put down on the floor, leaving room for the dirty solution to come in. So is that like a, a flat a horizontal partition or something? I can show you here. So it's like a bladder type of design. You can see there's still a lot of clean solution in that. Right? So that shrinks as the clean solution comes out, leaves space around it for the dirty water to come in. Okay. And so that's how we get the smaller diameter. And also by changing, you know, shrinking down a lot of the uh, mechanical parts inside as well. So it's like, you know, you make a smaller cell phone, you make a smaller touchpad. It's a real engineering challenge from a system standpoint. Um, system design standpoint. Oftentimes, making things smaller um, also involves compromises to efficiency or effectiveness. So, how does this compare to a full-size scuba? So, one of the things. Uh, so, the scuba 300 series has um, that this doesn't have uh, the additional vacuum up front. So, with a scuba 300, you can put it on a floor. It vacuums as it mops the floor as well. In the case of the uh, Scuba 230, we don't have that that uh, vac vacuum system, so you have to uh, sweep before you uh, use it. I actually use my Roomba first. I'll put my Roomba in and use that to, uh, to sweep up the floor, and then I'll put this in and finish the job for mopping. So I'd say that's probably the biggest trade-off in the, in the difference in the performance. And also, this does a smaller square footage as well, right? So the max square footage on the Scuba 230 is about 150 square feet, which is great for bathrooms, small kitchens, foyers, mudrooms, things like that. And what size is the demonstration area here? Oh boy! Let's go back to my uh, my my uh, grade school math. Uh, let's see. That looks like about four feet by by about ten. It's probably what fifty square feet, maybe something like that. So it so, can clean about. So yeah. So that's a good question. There's a short and a long cycle. If you hold the button down when you press the clean button for about four seconds, it'll go into a short cycle, which will do up to sixty square feet in twenty minutes. So this area in about in about twenty minutes. Um, or you can use the regular cycle, just pressing the button once and. It'll do up to 150 square feet in about 45 minutes. So does this Roomba have the same iAdapt navigation technology? It does. It does. It has iAdapt responsive cleaning technology. Exactly. For the same reason. Um, also, when you know water is a great dissolver of sorts, right? The uh, like with the, the 300 series, after the squeegee um, squeegees up the dirty water, there's still a fine solution of water that's left behind it. We actually spray a little bit more water on the floor to let it sit there and soak up the hard, um, the, the, the tougher stains. So when it comes back, because of iAdapt cleaning technology, it's going to come back and do multiple passes. Some of the some of those uh, particles will be loosened up more and it'll pick them up better in the second. Or so you leave the floor pass. a little bit wet on purpose? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, early on in the cycle, and then we, and we, you know, pick up more water as we go through the cycle. And does this have any uh, docking options yes. like the uh, Roombas? In this case, generally floor floor mopping is more like a an activity where you go to just do it, and then, and then you and then you walk away. So in this case, no, it's something that you plug in when you're done. There's not a there's not a dock where it sits up. 
and um, what's the pricing and availability? So this will be available spring of uh, 2011 on irobot.com, and the price is uh, $299.99, and that includes our essentials kit as well, which uh, has three um, removable bottom plates and an additional virtual wall as well. So we recommend with uh, with typical usage to swap out the bottom plate once every six months. So that's about two years worth of bottom plates that come with the product to begin with. Great, thank you.